user account now is shown within the all users group and now my sample query only shows that a specific user that had this full name on it. If I go ahead and modify once again uh, this particular query and intentionally on the criteria I like to go ahead and perhaps change this to be like you know I just make a typo in it that to be just like this that means exactly this has to be implemented as you realize by clicking OK and running the query again I'm not gonna get my user account because my full name wasn't like that if I go back and correct that problem then you can see that the query works perfectly just because the criteria is uh, smart enough to understand that now you do have a match part of that specific properties so by running this query again then I get the actual value in here so as a summary in order to edit the query statement you could actually make a combination you could actually create an and or uh, not do basically logical expression and conditional statements here of course displaying the query result also it will show you all available fields that you have chosen and then basically you could just go ahead and replace uh, the order in regard that you're searching because the sequence in the way that you're searching for the fields really make a big difference in regard to the actual result that you have also sometimes you might get duplicate rows you could omit that that means you just don't want to show uh, perhaps duplicated values just in case if sometimes you get duplicate values based on your condition now in order to run a query as I mentioned you just have to right click on the query and select run query all the results are displayed in the details pane and results are independent on validity of the site database make sure the inventory has run recently make sure you run the query and if you don't get what you're expecting make sure that the hardware inventory and software inventory has already been affected otherwise you're not getting the result on time make sure collection has already been updated because that's also important if I now go down in here uh, you could see that my collection also as far as all users shows existing users of mine if I just go ahead and refresh my collection it goes and uses a query and shows all available info here for me now let's go ahead and run and create additional query and I call it my second query and again I like to go ahead and search for user resource just repeat another example in here let's go ahead and search for only the full name this time make it short and easy and this time I like to go ahead and uh, search for a criteria simple value select the field again of the user resource to be searched for I go with fully username and I say if the value is like and I'm just gonna go and say like anything that has perhaps Kia in there so I click OK and OK and OK so I created my second query at the same time I like to go ahead and create a brand new user account and I like to have two different queries that show two different distinct user account and then I like to create a collection that merge these two together so now if I go ahead and create a new user account in here part of the uh, information I just go with Kia and Kia obviously the full name I just make it instead of Kia Kia I just use Kia instead just to match my query result so now in here on the SMS on the all user I want to make sure that I get the latest value here should be represented in here obviously it just takes some time if you don't see it you can simply come back in here and run the query again because the database has to be updated the Kia got created as you see now my second query should just show Kia in there now I have these two queries let's go and right click on a connection collection and select brand new collection I call it apex users perhaps on the membership rules I like to add those two queries that I've chosen and I've selected already I like to go and select my sample query as well as this is my collection obviously as well as the second query that I created so my collection consists of two different queries and then of course if I click OK by refreshing my query I actually get the combination of the result of those two queries in there so if I go down in here Apex users if I just go and just basically 
update my collection membership on it, part of Apex users, I should get two results coming. One Kia, one Sohel, which works perfectly. So the next section talks about how to report data using Crystal Info. First, you have to install Crystal Info. You must install it on the site server first. You know, this is kind of an option that you can add later on if you haven't installed it throughout the installation time. You can install it also on any SMS administrator console computer, just in case if you wanted to, you know, have just an administrator programs on a, on a desktop machine and connect to a remote SMS server site. Because most of the time, your servers are located in a server room and you are working on your own cubicle, perhaps. So you just want to go and have the capability of administration. So user needs SMS admin membership or act as part of an operating system rights in order to be able to work with Crystal Info. Predefined reports are available for you. You can take advantage of those or you could design your own report. So reporting data using other tools also are available. You could use other database applications. You could use custom applications. If you're a programmer, you could use WBM or DBC driver and connect to the data available and just go ahead and do anything you want to do with, with all these available data and create your own ASP application perhaps, create your own VB application, C++ application and whatnot. The uh, Crystal Report Info is part of the lab obviously. What I'm going to do, of course part of this lab you're going to perform query and reporting and that will cover this chapter. However, before I do that I'd like to go ahead and show you uh, the section that you do reporting in here. Part of tools, if I open it up, as you see you do have network monitor, you do have SMS service manager and so forth, but the query info is not available. So if you don't have Crystal input, part of the tools, you don't have Crystal report, you can actually come down in here and run the SMS setup again. By running the setup, you can actually go and modify the existing installation. And part of the existing installation you could simply go and choose a brand new component. As you see, software metering console was not selected on my case. SMS installer was not selected. I need all these later on anyway, so I'm just going to choose them at the point. Package automation script, I just like to demonstrate that, but it's not part of this class, so I'm going to go and use that. Crystal report, this is a section that I have to demonstrate for you. You have to have that. And then, of course, I click next. It says you have chosen to install Seagate Crystal Info Snap-in. That means this belongs to Seagate Corporation. This reporting tool is provided as a sample SMS Snap-in. You should install this tool only on a single SMS site with fewer than 500 clients. If your site is part of, of an SMS hierarchy or contains more than 500, see Crystal Info version 6. So otherwise, it's not going to work. I say yes, go ahead and install it. Obviously, it requires a system account in order to modify your existing site. I just accept the integrated security, accept the default. I like to go ahead and uh, it says that, you know, go ahead and get rid of the console that you have. Otherwise, you cannot upgrade it. So I click OK. Just go ahead, close all the available administrative tools that you have. And then the process of SMS setup is going and uh, modifying my SMS setting. So as you see, it, it installs Crystal Info at the end of this uh, setup. and by installing the Crystal Info, you're going to get a brand new node into your tools part of SMS Admin. So I'm done with the modification now. Now if I double click on SMS Administrator Console, now I should get a brand new node under tools because I've added my Crystal Info uh, feature part of Visual Developer Environment, part of the Snap-in. They actually add that the Snap-in automatically under tools. As you see under tools I have reports and of course there are some built-in reports that you can take advantage of and it starts monitoring them. The existing categories for the reports are as following. You have some reports about configuration information, hardware inventory, product compliance, queries perhaps and a status. Let's go take a look at the available queries, you can actually design your own if you like. You can go with the report object and design it. Or you could just use all available systems. As you see, this is a report. And if I click on it, automatically, they actually come with here and they say, okay, this report output is not available. And they tell you exactly how to make it available. In order to make it available, you go through the properties. And as you see under 
on the this specific information. This is a report that Microsoft has already generated using CRISO report. And of course, that's the totally different section, this different class in order to generate CRISO report information. And then, of course, this is an account that really executes it. And basically, you can go and modify this object. However, if you want to really execute this, you could go and uh, schedule your report or perhaps design a new re report for yourself right from here. You could uh, schedule the report and you could click on the schedule and say do it right now. And then, of course, only do it one time. I click apply and click OK in order to just run the report. And, of course, all I have to do is refresh the object and that takes a little bit of time in order to show the available information into the design of this uh, detail pane. Design screen of the detail pane is going to have the values of the report. As you see, my report failed just because I have a problem communicating with my SQL. So let's go ahead and fix that. It says cannot open SQL Server. So let's click on an account. And as you see on the account, it's trying to log on using administrator. And obviously, the logon password is not indicated in here. Let's go ahead and search the properties of the all system in here and try to establish a different uh, information. If I wanted to modify the report, automatically brings up the info report designer and I can basically go and change the report the way I want it. And of course, that requires you to know Crystal Report Designer and you can basically go and design your own report, also your own report in here using Crystal Report Designer. And that would be some sort of a example that how do you want to connect to it. We can actually go down in here and try to uh, pay attention how do we connect to our information uh, in regard to the SQL Server. Let's go ahead and select the database and take a look at the database itself. Let's try to verify the database. Using this report, I want to make sure that I can communicate with my database. It says the database has changed. Prefix it. I say no. Let's go ahead and check how to log on to a server. They're actually using a specific connection using the system. I can actually go and create a brand new connection, make sure that I can communicate with my system using SQL. I'm going and finishing this, naming a test connection, perhaps communicate with my SQL server, which is London in this case. And I like to communicate using uh, SA perhaps and using SA with uh, no password. Let's go ahead. Actually it requires a password. I use password as my user account. SA is a standard login ID for any SQL by the time you're installing it. It stands for System Administrator. It's a standard ID for SQL. It's not Windows. Now, if I go to the SQL Server, I want to just make sure that uh, I can communicate with both Windows as well as the standard IDs. You see, this is Windows only. That's why I was failing. So if I go with SQL and Windows at the same time, let's go ahead and restart our services so I can actually go ahead and run the report. There are some minor configuration we have to perform. As you see, that problem has fixed. Now, if I go back in here and try to communicate with my database, I can actually go ahead and finish this up, test my data source, and click OK. Now, I'm actually using that instead. And I'm using SA with no password in order to communicate with this now has been successfully succeeded. I'm actually saving my report. No problem. Now, if I go back to my SMS administrator and try to schedule my report to be executing right now at this time, I like to see the report. And now this time it wouldn't fail on me just because I couldn't communicate with my SQL server. Now, if I refresh the screen, instead of getting this error, I like to see a nice page looks like my Crystal report into the design detail pane. So, as you see, it takes a while in order to communicate. Let's go refresh this, make sure that everything is okay. And then, of course, at the end, I'm going to see the report.